So we have an isomorphism of groups. So here G and H are groups. And we have to prove that G is cyclic if and only if H is cyclic. So let's go ahead and do it. We're basically showing that if we have two groups that are isomorphic, if one of them is cyclic, then so is the other one. Okay, we'll start by assuming G is cyclic. So suppose G is cyclic. That means it has a generator, so then there exists some little g and capital G such that G is generated by little g. Every element of G is a power of little g. The claim is that H is cyclic. So we need to come up with a generator. So the natural choice is to look at the element phi of little g. So claim that H is generated by the element phi of little g. So all we have to do is take an arbitrary element of H and show it's in this set and we're done. Why? Because this set here is obviously a subset of H. So we only have to show that H is actually contained in the cyclic group generated by phi of little g. So that's all we have to show here. So suppose that we have some little h in capital H and we somehow need to involve g. So we'll use the fact that phi is onto. So since phi is onto, there exists some X and capital G such that phi of X is equal to H. Okay, phi of X is equal to H. But G is cyclic, so since G is cyclic, and it's generated by little g, which we set up here, there is an integer such that x can be written as g to a power of that integer, right? using the fact that g is cyclic. And we need to, we need to show that h is a power of little g. So let's write down h again, see if we can do it. So then h well, that's 5x. That's equal to, well, we know x is g to the n, so this is phi of g to the n. But this is really phi of g to the n. And that's certainly in the cyclic group generated by phi of g. Thus, h is contained in this cyclic group generated by phi of g. So h is equal to the cyclic group generated by phi of g. And this shows h is indeed cyclic. So that was uh, one direction. Um, it's kind of like a uh, what, I like, what I like to call a one-way proof. You just write something down and, and, and just go with it. I think maybe the trickiest step was this one right here. Um, but the reason we did that is because we wanted to involve G. So we had an H and capital H, and we wanted to somehow go back to the group G. And one way to do that was to use the fact that phi was on two. Let's prove the other direction. So suppose... H is cyclic with, let's say, generator H, little h. So we can write H as the cyclic group generated by little h. And the claim here is that G is cyclic. So claim G is cyclic. So again, we need to somehow produce a generator for G. 
Well, again, we can use the fact that phi is onto. So since phi is onto, there is some little g in capital G such that phi of little g is equal to h. And now we'll show that g is actually generated by little g. So we will show, we will show that g is equal to the cyclics group generated by little g. So take x in capital G and suppose it's arbitrary. Okay. And we have to show that it is a power of little g somehow. Well, how could we do that? Let's look at phi of x. So note, phi of x is an h. Thus, there exists an integer which we'll call m such that phi of x can be written as h to the m. And again, the goal here is to show that x is a power of little g. Uh, all we have right now at this point is this and this. So let's see if we can use this somehow. So let's see, so phi of x, so then phi of x, that's h to the m, which is phi of g to the m, which is phi of g to the m. Beautiful. Since phi is one to one, now we can use the fact that it's one to one, we have x equal to g to the little m, and that's certainly in the cyclic group generated by little g. Thus, g is contained in the cyclic subgroup, cyclic group generated by little g, whence it's equal to the group generated by little g, and this shows G is cyclic. So I thought that direction was uh, a little harder. I actually hadn't done this problem in a long time. So I was working it out and, and trying to write and think at the same time. Um, but I hope this helps.